Now, if you study this the way I studied it, this is an this is all an orchestrated campaign to increase their budget and their power. All this stuff, 99% of the stuff that you're hearing in the news, that's the pilot union who has opposed every single application for commercial use of a drone. They automatically put in 10 pages of opposition, saying we don't want drones, you should approve them. Well, the FAA had to put that aside because <coughs> they're too valuable. They're way too valuable, drones are, and the, and the data that they're able to capture. That's already been proven, and um, so now the pilots got together with the FAA, and they, um, they said, send us complaints. You see a drone, yeah, which is a near miss, and we're going to put it in our records, so that we can then use it against every the public and all the local law, the Congress and the legislature, all that, so we can regulate. Okay, that's what's going on. They got together with the Forest Service, the, you know, the firefighters is one of the big deals. Okay, drones are, you, you fly, we can't fly. Well, what really happened, if you could dig in there and look, the FAA, the Forest Service, and the Pilots Union got together and they talked it all up and they prepared it all for the fire season and they even created big, beautiful posters. Before the summer, before, all before the before summer. Before the problem. And then, when they were ready to roll it out, they went to all the news media outlets and they said, we saw a drone and, and, we, and we had to land the aircraft. And that's, that reverberated around the globe. And the common guy in the street believes that that really happened. No, it was a setup. It was, it was, it, the reason it was a setup is because the hobby people can pretty much do what they want. They only have one rule. And it's not even a rule, it's a policy. And it's really the common law. You can't fly reckless. You gotta listen to Todd and do it his way, and you're good to go. You can go over 400 feet. You can go at night. You can go, you only have to notify the tower. His rules are really clear. That's causing a lot of problems the FAA, because they're saying to the commercial people, the responsible people, the people that have invested lots of money and expertise, the universities, that, that sort of thing, commercial universities, not public, they're restricting them so much that they can't compete with the hobbyists. Not acceptable. I mean, that, they, that can't last, okay? In the meantime, the public is learning about drones, and they're like cell phones, they're like computers, they're like the internet. There's going to be a drone tsunami, and because they can help everybody. You, know, we haven't even thought of the things that when when we had the cell phone, you could make a phone call and from your car. That was cool. Okay, we didn't think about, we couldn't think about all the things that were going to happen. That's really good. So that's that's what that to me. It's a no-brainer. The tsunami is, is there, and the tipping point has already been reached, and we can help that to happen by following what Todd said and advocate for the technology and show them that, it, that you know, a GoPro camera at 100 feet can't even make out who you are, let alone spy on you. And if it's hovering overhead, the pilot's trying to get his, his bearings or adjust his camera so you can take the sunset. You know, it's, it's not about you, okay? And, and yeah, we pay some good service to privacy, but between your open Wi-Fi and cameras and every, every place you go outside, it's not gonna happen at all. It's, the drones are not the privacy problems that people think they might be. Um, I'm involved with companies that are flying on a regular basis for Hollywood. They're flying on a regular basis for um, all across the country, all across the world. They call me from Africa. They call me from New York. They call me from, I'm, I'm, I'm tied into, as a result of helping people out, people are reading my petitions on the FAA site, and they, they send me 
my email's there, my phone number's there, the petition. So they get in touch with me. Help me. <laughs> so I'm meeting with the greatest people you can possibly imagine. And what I want to do, network, build, come on, we can do it. You know, we're not going to wait for somebody else to do it. We're on the ground floor, and if you associate with the right people, we can really make a great contribution and can be really advance all different sciences, advance the UAS and so forth. Prosecutions, Dr. Anderson, there's only been two, okay? And uh, I'm going to look at my dates because I want to be accurate. When we say prosecutions, this is somebody that got in trouble for flying. Yeah, this is, this is only. From the FAA. Yeah, there's been only, exactly, only been two. Um, uh, March, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just look real close. Oh, and by the way, they're being completely unreasonable. A manned aircraft, <laughs> a manned aircraft, a paraglider, okay? You're flying 100 feet in an aircraft. They don't require any of the stuff that they require for drone. They just kind of like ignore them, okay? Sport pilot, I got a driver's license. Have a nice day. Of course, there's some, on the flip side, there's not, there's not three million of them. Uh, and in your backyard and in your cities and that sort of thing. Let's see. Um, okay. The first case, he flew in 2011. FAA played with him for a couple of years. And in 2013, they prosecuted him. Okay, they brought a case against him. Um, he was subject to a $10,000 fine. His name was Raphael Parker, Piker, Parker. The worker from Team Black Sheep. We call him Trappy. He's my buddy on Facebook. And we converse regularly. Okay? Ace's guy. He's right now cutting edge. He's developing the hardware to be able to fly 25 miles from here with the drone. Uh, so they prosecuted him, and there was an attorney. On the East Coast, his name was Brendan Shulman. This was New York, right? Wasn't this in New York? Uh, Where he was flying? No, the, the, so the, the incident was at Virginia Tech. Oh, Virginia Tech, right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, the incident, he flew a fixed wing through the campus. This guy is an ace pilot. Okay, he's flown since he was in the womb. <laughs> and, and he, but people never saw that. So some of them got a little worried. And the FAA said, this is, this is totally off the charts. And he's flying this kind of thing, okay? Smaller than that, I think. Styrofoam. Come on. You know, I go online to some people go bouncing off people's heads. And all it does is put a little dent in the styrofoam. Anyway, Brendan Shulman did a really good job. He went before the administrative judge. And the administrative judge said to the FAA, you gotta be joking. This is not an aircraft. This, this, is, this is some toy. Get out of my court and get lost. And the FAA freaked. Oh no. We have no control over these dangerous aircraft. All these millions of things that are going to be flying in our NAS, we don't have any control, according to this judge. They're just toys. So they immediately appealed to the NTSB, I guarantee you they were talking that the whole building was shaking as a result of, of that decision. And of course, the NTSB said, yes, they are aircraft. An aircraft is any device used for flight in the air from the ground to the moon, infinity. And the FAA's got jurisdiction. So NTSB sends it back in a normal trial type situation. Now we're going to decide whether he's reckless. Because all we decided was it wasn't an aircraft, and now it is an aircraft, so now we can talk about recklessness. He spent over a year with an attorney, um, and he really wanted to, what everybody wanted to win was it's not an aircraft, or it is an aircraft. That was decided, so they settled the case for 1100 bucks. And the, um, 
no admission of any wrongdoing. He's a, he's a, celeb a global celebrity partner, completely clean record, and the FAA just moved on, okay? Um, there's been a bunch of educational letters prior to May. I haven't seen any since last summer. And normally when, when the guys get them, they post them online and everybody shares them around. So certainly in the circles that I'm in. I haven't seen any educational letters. Instead, they have the pilots making the complaints and they turn their attention to hobby registration of pilots, not aircraft. So in September, they took all their data, all oh, these are so dangerous and we gotta, we gotta register. That was all, in my opinion, a subterfuge. It was designed strictly because Congress said in its 2012 uh, uh, statute to the FAA where they said get your butt in gear and, and, and foster this technology, Congress said, by the way, Amy's doing a great job. Stay away from model aircraft. Don't touch them. But because model aircraft are able to do so much more, the FAA has different plans in Congress or the courts. And they're planning, mark my words, they're going to try to apply all of the manned regulations to both hobby and commercial and public aircraft. A little less to public because the public gets away with a lot more. The, um, in order to bolster, in, the, in order to manipulate the press and to manipulate public opinion, in September, there was a, there was a company that's been flying for 27 years in New York and Chicago called Sky Pan. Okay? They mainly fly fixed wing, and there was no rules. They, they, they have a really good business getting aerial data with drones. They tussled with the FAA for years, and they even sued the FAA. They wanted to make an example of somebody, so they, September, they came out and they charged them with a $1.9 million fine. And they it hit, globally it hit all the, all the papers, and, we, and Skypen has, has, has responded and said, you're nuts, we'll say, We've never had a crash we, of any kind of, of any significance. We've never nobody's ever gotten hurt. By the way, that's what that's the beauty of this tsunami. Okay, DJI, Unique, uh, 3DR, they tell everybody they fly out of the box. Just just charge the battery and fly. Okay, and a lot of people are doing that. And the truth is, there's very little damage. There's been no deaths. There's been no major deals as a result of millions and millions of people flying out of the box all around the globe. How did, you know, what's the danger? If the danger's not there, they're not being regulated, they're not being trained, how, how are you gonna, how are you gonna say that we've gotta treat these things as if they were bombs? Because that's what they're doing. It's not going to, long term, it's not going to fly. Um, so that case is pending. And then we got all around the country, we got, you know, conflict, ma mainly between pilots who don't understand the technology and don't want the, and are used to flying wherever they, they fly and nobody's there except the gigantic other planes. And, and they don't have to work, especially police helicopters and sheriff's helicopters. They own the friggin' sky. Um, now all of a sudden, there's drones. Even if the drones are flying below 200 feet, they they don't like it. They see a drone, they see a party balloon. Uh, they see birds and party balloons all the time, but they can barely make them out. <laughs> conditions and they're flying fast and all that, they've done studies. They can't make them out. But the report says, near miss with a drone. And if it goes, oh, great, we got 600 of these this year. More, please. It's all going to blow up in the face because the truth always comes out in the wash. These things are pretty safe, especially if you follow Todd's and advice. 
one one note to that. So the, all this stuff came out real quick about all these near misses and whatever, and somebody started looking into it more, and they started looking at where these occurred and some of these, and some of these were at like 20,000 feet or something, which there's no way any of our equipment could ever get to that level. So it obviously showed you that either A, one person was making it up, or B, they're not educated enough to understand the technology and what the capabilities are, because it's just not gonna happen at that. I, I, I over-exaggerated that, that footage or whatever, but it was some ridiculously high. And, uh, and but they were, the, the uh, FAA and everybody was using this as, as a way to say, look at all these near misses, but if you actually looked into the data, they weren't necessarily all near misses. So I'm, I'm not saying one way or another, I'm just giving you the information. For, you're absolutely right, um, and forensics have shown actual blood and DNA from the curve that, the, that caused the damage to the frigate plane. Then can say, give you lots of pictures of damaged aircraft. The biggest problem they got up there is all, especially small craft, and we know from the New York City community on the Hudson, birds. FAA has to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> in, in, in any event, um, uh, this is, uh, I want to empower everybody. Okay, especially researchers. And I have a selfish motive. The selfish motive is, I get it, actionable data. Return on investment. I have seen actual cases where the drone has come in to an industry and it has saved the, the client millions of dollars. And it has made the operation so much more safe. Um, and they're getting as good as as good or better data uh, as a result of the drone technology. Everybody and his brother wants to go to Hollywood, take movies, and they want to go to do real estate cheap, that kind of stuff. I want conservation. I want um, industrial inspections. I want to really create master the actionable data, low-hanging fruit. One of my ideas, I, bet I go to these 